Hi and welcome back. I hope you have got to this stage and you now understand what is going on in terms of our data. Now, I've harped on a little bit about the whole idea of collecting trials and then making the average. Now, you should be able to do this in all of the data tables you do from now on. All right, now the ones we're particularly interested in, in this case, we're interested in the average because we've taken all the trial data, which we know has got errors in built into it. It just happens that way, don't be worried about it. We just got to recognize and say, yes, that's a problem. So our average becomes our best guess. So when we're doing our calculations, when we're doing our graph, we should take that into account. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create, to make it easier on myself, I'm going to create a summary table. All right. Now I'm going to take my independent variable, control C, control V, and I'm going to put it there. Now, next to it, the number I'm interested in is this one here. Now there are ways of looking at it and doing other things with it in terms of um, using your control key and goodness knows what. I just find it is a little bit of a problem. Now, <coughs> I'm going to go back to, sorry I just coughed. So I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to use what we already know. I'm going to put a merge those cells and I'm going to merge this cell. Just so it looks nice. Now this one here, if I've used a calculation up here, like a, a set of formulas, I can't really copy them across because there is a lot of times it will make mistakes for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the machine simply to take a copy of this number and put it in the box. All right, now, you know I like using the fill down, so I'm going to fill that down and it brings the rest across because it knows I want to do that. Now I'm also going to ask it to do this for me. And I've done the wrong thing, haven't I, Mr. Carson? It doesn't matter. I can refix it. I'm going to say, right, I want this number too. All right, then I'm going to fill down. Now they're the numbers I want and they're going to become very important later on. But if I'm doing a, which called this summary table, if I'm doing a summary table, I need it to show exactly what I've got. So I'm going to go back into this and I'm going to get rid of the merge. And I'm going to take that one and put it down there. I'm going to do the same thing here because I suddenly realise I have to add more labels. Right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take that one and put it there. Now we're going to end up with this. So obviously our top is the hard rate. And it's in BPM. So now I've told the person who's reading this exactly what I want to tell them and I've told them enough information so I can get my good grade. So let's look at it. I've got this. Let's put an average on. So now I'm going to be showing in my report, I'm going to be showing my raw data, but it's got some calculations as well. That's okay. Then over here is my summary of that. Right, now we can do a graph. Now to do that, I'm going to start off by just highlighting these numbers down here. I'm going to highlight the numbers. I'm going to come up to the top toolbar and I'm going to find insert chart and I'm going to put that in. Right, look at that. So now I've got an insert chart, but I haven't got too much going on there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is fix it up. So if I come across here to the right, I can see that I've got the setup. If you don't have a scatter chart, you need a scatter chart. All right, we're after a scatter chart all there because we are dealing with a continuous data and that means we can use a line to go with it. All right, so I'm now going to customize this. 
So first thing I'm going to do is to give the chart title. See how you can change these? Right, now I don't like that. That's not a very good chart title. That won't score you very well. The best chart title you could use would be something like your research question. So my research question is, how does my heart rate change as the time of exercise increases? And this automatically goes up. You'll notice that as I'm typing it in, it goes above there, so I can see what's going on there. All right. That looks all right for the chart title. That lets people know what this is all about. So let's look at the horizontal. Now our horizontal is exercise time or intensity in seconds. I can live with that. So I can leave that like that. Now it's the change so do it. And the vertical one, average is not a really good one. How about I say average heart rate? And measured in BPMs. Alright, so see how it's changed all the way through? Right, so now I've got something that is starting to look like some information I can use. Okay, so I've finished there. Now I'll go to the next one down, which is a thing called series. Now sometimes I might have more than one series here. And when we set up the the chart the other day that had two people, the results of two people on it, we could see that we could just do one of them at a time or do all of them with the same. Now you'll notice the colour is blue for the default colour. I think we changed that to a green or something. I have a green. Alright, and of course you can change your shape. We don't have to have a circle. We can have all sorts of different shapes and it gives you those down here. I'm going to leave it as a circle. Now if we come down here, we see that there's a thing called a trend line. Now because we have errors, we must use a trend line. We can't sort of just join the dots. We have to sort of say, well we know the value is near those dots. The real value is near them. Not necessarily the dot itself, but somewhere near it. So if we put a line that is following the pattern in there, that becomes our trend line. So let's put it in. Now I'm going to make a different colour. I'm going to, so it stands out, I'm going to make a red. So I've got a red line and green dots. Now we see we've got a linear line here at the moment. So in other words, we're saying it increases at a constant rate. So we can see that the heart rate starts off down here. This of course is your resting heart rate and these ones follow through. All right. Now, if we don't think that's the right sort of one, what I'd like you to try to do is to look at the type of line you can draw. Now, there's a whole range here, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to suggest maybe the polynomial might be better. Now, remember, that's a straight line. These other ones are curves. That goes even closer, doesn't it? All right. So that's why I'll change it around and look at it, because I need my graph to match what my data is showing me. All right, now I've got that ready. What I can do is copy it across into my thing. Now note that I'll have already put the front, the big table at the top. I'm just going to move this down a bit. All right, so we're going to end up with the big table at the top copied across and in my report. The little table down below, the just to help us do that, copy it and across in our report. That just lets me <coughs> see this a little bit closer. Excuse me about my coughing. And we're going to have this. Now, when you are doing this, don't forget, if you are doing this, I want you to make these a bit thinner. If you make them a bit thinner, you don't have to actually write the word trial. It can just be T1, T2, T3. You can make this thinner because what that does is make the table bigger and the numbers are easier to read. So make sure you do that, and that should take about half a page. Then when you copy this across, like if I come into here and copy it, Control-C, 
and then control V put up into my document, into my report document, it will ask me if do I want to keep them linked. Now my strong suggestion there is yes, you do. Because if I change anything on here, this document, it will change automatically on this document. All right. Now this also should be about half a page in size. So can you adjust the, when you paste it in, can you adjust the size on it so it's about half a page for me. All right, that's where we're up to and that's probably where we're going to stop for this lesson.